In this tutorial, we're going to look a little further at creating text strings and manipulating those text strings. So if you remember in a previous tutorial, we did show you how to create objects such as barcodes, uh, graphics, and drawing of shapes. And we do have the text creation tool up here in the top uh, left corner. So I'm going to click on add text string and you can see our text string does appear. Now, you remember we previously mentioned that there are several little icons or tools located around this text string object. These are tools which you can use to physically manipulate the size, location, angle, and a few different and other geometries of the text string object. And you can do that using your mouse. Uh, additionally, you do have the ability now to control those objects by number. Okay, so for example, width and height. And if you remember, we discussed the fact that the active or selected object in this area of the screen, its parameters or the data for that object are always going to show up in a organized tab system to the right. So right now, the text string is our active object, and we are looking at the tabs that do pertain to that object. Okay, so let's discuss briefly the movement of an object. We have this little square here in the corner. If we put our mouse over it, it turns into a crosshair. We can click on that object and hold with our mouse, and we can simply drag the text object around. So this is how we physically move items. Okay. Now you can see on the right side of the screen, as I move this object around, I am seeing my X and Y coordinates change. Now you do see there are positive and negative values depending on where I'm at and that is because we are using the four quadrant system. By default, all objects come in on zero, zero. If I zoom in on this object, you can see that I have a small cross in the middle or X symbol in the middle of my object and that is my reference point for my X and Y location that small crosshair, okay? And that is where my object's going to be located. Now by default, that is on center. You can change it to the left or right, bottom or middle bottom. Uh, same with the top of the object as far as the reference point, but by default, it is on center. Recommend that you leave that on center. There's no big advantage to moving that point. Most people get accustomed to working off center from the get-go and uh, get used to doing everyday operations in this manner. All right, next thing is resizing an object in aspect ratio using this corner tool. So if I click again with my crosshair on this angled arrows, I can click, hold, and drag up and down and basically increase or decrease the size of my text string in aspect ratio. So I don't get, um, you know, a stretched out uh, text string that is still short or vice versa. If I want to manipulate out of aspect ratio, I can click and drag here to increase the height without increasing the width. And I'll just undo that to send it back to normal. And by the same virtue, I can stretch it this way without increasing the height. And undo that to go back to normal. Now, to select my object, you do notice I'm clicking on it, but I can also click and then drag around the object and let go, and that will select it as well. I also have a rotation tool here in the corner. I can rotate my object, as well as do some things like add some skews to the object, and this way as well, which gives it an italicized look. Okay. Now all of these items are also contained over here in the general tab. So under the general tab, you can see under main we have X and Y position, width and height, as well as maintain aspect ratio, angle, shear X and shear Y. Those are all the items that we just covered here. If I want to change the object to an exact width and height, I can do that by leaving this off. So if I want to make it 10 by 20, I can do that and leave my maintain aspect ratio off. However, most of the time you want your text to look like it's supposed to look by default. Therefore, you're going to click this box to maintain aspect ratio. So if I want 12 millimeter tall characters, my width is going to grow to the, in the same aspect. You can see here it grew to 31.98. If I grow my width down, 
um, or excuse me, decrease my width down to 14th, you can see that my height has now decreased to 5.25. And you can see the same thing with my location. If I want to put this at 10 on the X and positive 10 on the Y, you can see my object has now gone to that location. Additionally, I have the ability to angle this object any way I want. 45 degrees, 23 degrees, 108 degrees. I can really put it in any angle I choose to put it at. And with my shear now, you can see that we can shear objects just like we did manually in the X and in the Y. And this can also be a negative value if you choose to go the other direction.